Section 17.1, what is light? Well, we saw before that light is um, um, electric uh, and magnetic fields that are traveling in space, they are oscillating. And um, we also saw, well, actually in one section that we didn't cover, uh, we should have seen that light can be treated as particles depending on the detection device, but it can be treated as uh, light packets which are known as photons. But uh, with respect to our interest, um, most uh, examples that we're going to see, uh, light is treated as a, as a wave, as a, what we saw before, waves of electric and magnetic fields. And um, if, travel, if light is uh, observed as a particle, then it goes in a straight line. But if light is observed as a wave, then it has all the uh, wave phenomena like uh, uh, refraction and we're going to see those uh, examples soon, next. So this is what I was saying. The photon model is for uh, experiments that require uh, detection of light as particles. The wave model is um, a description of the propagation of light when um, the uh, the apparatus is large compared to the size of the wave and we're gonna see that it can be this one can be simplified by the ray model that uh, represents the wave propagation by using arrows this is an example that uh, I have posted it's an application that I have posted in, in Blackboard. And by playing with this, once, the, once that you make it run, by playing this, you can move the this electron up and down and create an electric field that will propagate to this other antenna that will be receiving the signal and moving the electrons up and down. And it can be operated manually, you gra grabbing the electron up and down, or it can be operated um, automatically if you click here and oscillate and you can change the frequency of oscillation and the amplitude of oscillation. It will help you visualize the propagation of waves. And um, if you have a device that does it automatically, you can see that um, there, the wave is going to have a sinusoidal shape in which the electric field in this case is uh, pointing in the y and minus y direction whereas the magnetic field with the blue arrows is pointing left and right on the Z direction. They can be pointing in other directions, of course, but um, what is true all the time is that one field is going to be at 90 degrees with respect to the other field, and also that they are in phase. In other words, when one is zero, the other one is zero. When one is maximum, the other one is maximum, and so on. The speed of the uh, propagation is, so uh, as we saw before, three times into the eight meters per second. To represent this type of motion, we need to deal with waves, and waves don't have a beginning in a, uh, or, or an end, so we need to somehow identify them, and we do that by looking at the crest of the wave and drawing a line. Those are known; those lines are known as wave fronts, and the distance between one such wavefront in a consecutive one uh, is one wavelength. This um, is denoted with the letter lambda. And perpendicular to the, these uh, wavefronts, we draw an arrow that uh, represents the direction of motion of the wave. If the waves are being produced by a point source, like in this case, the waves will spread out spherically and if you go far, far, far away, those waves are going to be, will be coming flatter and flatter, and it will end up looking like, like planes, plain, planar wave fronts moving uh, perpendicular to those rays. This is a peculiar phenomenon. Uh, waves, if you have water waves, for instance, moving from top to bottom, 
as soon as they hit a barrier, they will propagate almost in a straight line, but uh, there's going to be always a little bit more, a little bit of bending on the side, and we're going to see that next. This is the shadowing, the shadow area, and this is where the beam goes on. We can see the same effect here. The light comes in, this light from the sun, but um, the barrier stops the light from coming, and we, we get a sharp um, shadow. That bending that I was mentioning before is known as diffraction, is bending around uh, curves. And the amount of bending depends on uh, the wavelength and also the relative size of the wavelength with respect to the opening. Like in this case, if we have a narrow opening com comparable to the size of the wavelength, then we can see that the bending is much larger. In this case, the wavelength would be the distance from one of these rays to one of these light areas, light um, areas to the, the next one. So those would be, um, it, it's light being reflected from the crest of the, of the wave, but we can take them as the wave fronts. This is another example of diffraction. You can see that light passing through here or also here gets uh, bent over, uh, producing this effect. Of course, in all cases, the velocity, the speed of, uh, of light is always constant. This is constant in air and um, in vacuum. This is the, uh, the value in vacuum, but it's um, almost the same as in air, but um, the um, frequency is related to the wavelength by means of this relationship, which is valid for all waves. This would be the speed of light in this case, and they are inversely proportional. Like for instance, for a uh, visible light, is uh, lies between 400 wavelengths of 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. A nanometer, you know, is 10 times 10, is 1 times 10 to the negative 9, which means that 400 nanometers is like uh, you divide 1 meter in 1 million um, divisions. You take one of those and take a uh, half, and that half is going to be 500 nanometers. So a wavelength will fit in that half of one millionth of a meter. And that is what we can um, see with our own eyes, is this called the so-called visible spectrum. For instance, if we take um, a 600 nanometer wavelength and calculate the frequency by means of this expression, we can see that it, the, whatever produced that uh, wave was oscillating at a rate of five times 10 to the 14 times per second. A hertz is one over seconds. So it is uh, a lot of oscillations per second. What system could do that? Well, uh, it has to be something that can oscillate a lot in a very brief amount of time, many times per second. It has to be something very small like an atom. Later on, we're going to see an effect known as refraction, which is uh, bending of light when it goes from one medium to another medium. And refraction, um, that effect, uh, to characterize that effect, we look at this, uh, the ratio of the velocity of one on, in, in vacuum or air with respect to the velocity in the second medium. This ratio is known as the index of refraction. And we know that uh, this is the maximum speed that the wave can have. So this number is going to be always larger than any other velocity that we, speed we can put here. So this ratio is always going to be um, larger than one. Here are some values for vacuum. It's one exactly for air. It's just a little bit more and so on all the way to, uh, for instance, diamond is 2.42. We're going to see that it is because of this property that we pay so much for 
well, you pay so much for these stones because I don't buy them. Um, the 2.42 means that uh, there's a lot of bending of light as it goes from air into diamond, making it sparkle. And because of that, and because of our tribal instincts, we tend to look at those things and say, oh, I want that. And you end up paying a lot of money. Well, one question here is, uh, what is the speed of light in diamond? You have a way to calculate it here. And you have the values of N there. So, pause, think, and answer. Well, it's relatively simple. Uh, we want the velocity, the speed here, so it's going to be c over n. c over n is uh, 3 times n to uh, divided by 2.42 for diamond. It turns out that it's um, less than half, is 1.23 times n to the 8 meters per second. This is the velocity, this is the speed of light in uh, inside of a diamond. This is what I was uh, mentioning before. Refraction is this effect. The, the, what happens when one wave goes from, from one medium to another medium. In this case, we have it from air or vacuum into something, a transparent material, and then back into air. Well, it turns out that uh, the wave here and the wave in the second medium have the same frequency. And um, so, how many how many times the the wave hits this uh, boundary is as many times as the wave propagates into this other boundary. So it, the frequency is the same. What and also the velocity. We know that the velocity here is going to be smaller in magnitude than the velocity here. So um, that makes the wavelength vary. And to see the relationship between the two wavelengths, we can. Just um, set up the, an equation for the wavelength here, an equation for the wavelength there, taking into account that um, the frequency is the same, and we're going to get the following. The wavelength in the material, which is given by the speed of the material divided by the frequency of the material, can be casted like this. But since the frequency in the material is the same as the frequency in the vacuum, then we can recast this as that, and with an n dividing the wavelength in vacuum. So the wavelength in the material is going to be always shorter than the wavelength in vacuum because this is always larger than one and the ratio makes it smaller. A quick check, we have one material, another material, and another material, and look at the relative wavelengths. We have a short wavelength, medium wavelength, and large wavelength. And the question is, how are these numbers related to one another? Remember that the relationship between wavelengths is given by this. So at this point, you have to pause, uh, think for a long time, and then answer. Well, it's, um, it goes like um, inverse to n. So small n goes with large lambda, consequently. n2, which is the largest, is going to be the smallest lambda. n1, which is the intermediate, is going to be the intermediate lambda. n3, which is the smallest, is going to be the largest uh, lambda. I said it wrong. Um, the smallest is going to be the smallest Lambda is going to be the largest index. The uh, largest lambda is going to be the smallest index. We have a related case. A light wave travels as a plane wave from air into glass. Glass has an index of refraction of 1.5. Which diagram shows the correct wave fronts? In other words, in going from 1 to 1.5, what's going to happen? to the wavelength. Will it get larger? Will it get smaller? It's going to be equal. Well, we have the three cases here. The 
These lines represent wave fronts. So in this case, we have a wave that is of some size going into a wave that has a larger wavelength. Here is the, a wave going to the same, and here is going from this to a smaller wavelength. So pause, think, and answer. Yeah, it's inversely proportional to n. Consequently, the larger the n, the larger the n, the smaller the wavelength. This is another example. We have light of 600 nanometers uh, getting into a microscope slide that is one millimeter thick. What is the speed of, um, of the light in the glass? Well, we have for glass, we have n equals 1.5. It's the same example as we did for the diamond. So it's going to be the velocity divided by 1.5, the speed of light divided by 1.5. And that gives you 2 times n to the 8. Next question is how many wavelength, wavelengths of the light are inside of the slide? Well, just a matter of dividing the thickness by this to see how many. It's a simple exercise. It's 2,500 times inside of a 1 millimeter uh, glass slide. Uh, you can fit to 2,500 uh, complete waves, wavelengths. Quick check. We have a light, orange light, 600 nanometers, going from air to a second medium where it looks blue. What is the second medium? So it goes from um, large wavelength to a small wavelength, which means that it goes from one end to a larger end. So, uh, it's, a lar it's, a, it's an air, the second one has to have something larger than, an end larger than air, but that pretty much leaves uh, just about everything, except vacuum. So, pause, think, and answer. All you have to do is just try those two, that are the only two that you know of, and see, calculate the ratio of the two wavelengths, and n can be given by this ratio, and it gives you 1.33, which is, uh, uh, if you use that for 1.33, water, glass, 1.33 is for water, so this is not glass, it should be water. So the answer should be C. I have to correct this slide. And that's it uh, for this section. This is, these are the homeworks, uh, homework problems, multiple choice question, a few problems, and next is uh, in the first of light.